Well, today I'm starting a new series and I need your help to do it. I could probably make this series run for years on my own power, but I would like your involvement, particularly you folks who are new to ham radio. So let's get started with there are no dumb questions in ham radio. Okay, so how do I need your help? Well, I've got an email address we cooked up over at hamtactical.com, which is the website for the merch store for the Ham Radio Crash Course, which helps support the Ham Radio Crash Course here on YouTube and the podcast that I run every week with my wife, Leia. Anyway, josh at hamtactical.com. Send me your questions, your questions on starting out in ham radio, something that you've asked the question and you've got an E slapped on the hand, don't ask that question. Go read your manual or didn't you get that question um, on the license? I promise I'll go in and deep dive it if I can't just make a video and knock it out. I will try and help you all um, as to the best of my ability and if I can't, I'll find somebody who can and we'll figure it out. With that said, I am aiming to get people started in ham radio with my channel. You've obviously picked that up by the name and the backlog of hundreds of videos now and live streams just catering to that group of people because this is a super rewarding hobby. It gives me a lot of passion in what I do. And when I wake up in the morning, I feel yay ham radio. I wish I had more time to play with my radios. But the topic, the no dumb questions is gonna start with a bit of a broad term and we're gonna cover a lot of things here. Hopefully we'll get some good questions from you all and, and narrow the focus a little bit. But today we're gonna be talking about handheld HT antennas. Handheld HD antennas out of the box look pretty similar. They're these rubbery whip antennas. They mount with what we'll talk about is an SMA connection, but what does it look like underneath? Well, I degloved one. This is basically a Baofeng uh, whip antenna. Inside, what is it? It's just a coil of wire all the way up. It's just a big coil of wire. These antennas are not great, these rubber duck antennas as they're called. Rubber duck stock antennas for handheld ham radios. They are good at what they are kind of designed to do though, and just be this thing that you can bang around. Antennas for HTs are sometimes considered a disposable good. It's almost something that you expect to replace. However, they work just fine if they're gonna sit on your backpack strap or on your hip as you're walking around town. They won't really catch on things. The acronym Sub Miniature Version A is a tiny copper-like threaded connector and it comes in two varieties male and female or I should have said female and male now what I'm about to tell you is going to help you in all of your gendering of antennas henceforth you simply look at the middle part of whatever it is an antenna or a radio or a piece of coax with a connector that's already on it you're going to look for the metal pin or socket or hole if there's a pin it's a male connector a, a sticky out bit if there is a socket or a hole, then it's a female connector. Japanese radios generally have female SMA connectors and HT antennas for Japanese radios would be the other side of the equation, the SMA male connection. You can flip that around with Chinese radios as those are generally male on the body of the radio, SMA male, and female on the antenna. Now the same can be applied to BNC connectors, bayonet connectors. These allow quick connect disconnect from radios. You can just see it's a quarter turn and then it comes right off. Look to the center pin that will show a pin over here means it's male and a socket over here means it's female. We have ad adapters that you can apply to ham radio antennas or ham radio ham radios whether they're mobiles that go inside your car, base stations, or you're just trying to move a large plug into a small plug, we use adapters to do that. I like BNC connectors because they're that easy to use when you're getting inside and outside of a car. It always makes it nice to just twist it and pop it off and go about your business if you wanna switch them out. And if you go BNC for all your radios, then it's just a matter of buying the adapters and then you can reuse the same antennas to your heart's content. I have a video on that, by the way, if you wanna go into more detail, go take the look, go take a link, go take a look at the link in the description. So many times if you're on the web, on the Facebook, you'll have somebody tell you, oh, the first thing you need to do is upgrade that that antenna to get better performance. Guess what, they're not wrong. They're, they're totally not wrong. But there's some thoughts that need to go into your head uh, when, you're, when you're thinking about antennas to go by and what their use case may be for you. 
A lot of times the rubber duck antenna is gonna be fine for talking in and around to maybe a couple of repeaters. Uh, if you're at a, an event where people are maybe no more than a mile or two from you, you'll be able to talk to them just fine with the rubber duck antenna. And again, it's convenient to just put on your side. It's not really that bothersome when you slap your head into it on your backpack strap. If you wanna get out further, then they do make longer antennas. Now those antennas may not just be a coil of wire. They're gonna look maybe something like this, this telescopic antenna. There's a coil of wire right here for loading, getting the electrical length of wire to the maximum point that it needs to be for two meters and 70 centimeters of frequency operation. And obviously they're telescopic as well, so they get really long. However, this isn't really something convenient that you want attached to your radio. So I often tell people, hey, have one of these telescopic antennas in your kit, in your bag, whenever you need to use it, but consider just using the rubber duck antenna most of the time. What I really like though is the signal stuff, signal stick, these super elastic antennas that you can bend kind of all over the place. These are a quarter wavelength about whip antenna that is gonna perform much better than this hunk of coiled wire here that came off of that stock Baofeng antenna. Generally, these perform much better than your rubber duck stock antennas. Even the nice Japanese radios, this antenna is going to do a lot better. But you can see the length is like a lot. And this is a whippy thing that you, you know poke somebody's eye out with. In fact, uh, I had a Karen tell me once at Disneyland when I had this on my bag that I was going to poke her son's eye out with it when I was walking around at Disneyland. So um, be mindful of that. Sometimes you want to go the opposite direction, which is you just want a super flexy, tiny little um, whip with likely a coil here at the base of this anodized metal. Maybe you want to go this way. So something that, again, it's, it's really unobtrusive and kind of can just sit here, really won't get in the way of, of you while you're walking around. You can expect that this isn't going to transmit as well as your long boy um, signal stick. But that may be the consideration you want. Because again, you're going backpacking, you're going hiking somewhere, you don't want to be banging yourself in the head with an antenna or poke a kid's eye out. Now, when you get to your location, you might want to swap that out. And that's when you just slide this guy off and put on a big honker like this Abri antenna. Again, Abri antennas performed really well in my simple testing that I've done that uh, I'll post the link in the description and you'll see a card in the upper corner here that you can go take a look at, which is, should be right there. Uh, these antennas work fantastic, but also not something you necessarily want to have just sitting on your body like that. And that's an important note as well. If you walk around with your antenna on your radio like this, you're putting a lot of load or a lot of strain on the antenna connection. And these SMA connectors aren't really built for sheer force being applied to them. So if I took my hand and just pulled this down and cranked it, I absolutely would damage this SMA connection. And it would probably go so far as to damage the PCB or the circuit board that this connection is riding on. If that happens, you pretty much have no other option but to get a replacement radio. So if you're rocking a Baofeng like this, it's probably not that big a deal if we just snapped the thing off and, uh, and moved on with another radio, because these are cheap. If, however, you're rocking something like an ID52, which is considerably more expensive, you may want to just stick with a, a nice unobtrusive antenna and then get to where you're going or deploy the right antenna for the job at any one time you'd be thinking about using one. So, okay, you might have also asked, I want to just have something high speed, low drag that I can keep on my person, but how do I reach out if I were to ever need to? Well, you generally have three options. You have the standard base station antennas that you probably see when you're driving around town, those long vertical white poles or just a really long whip that you see on someone's house with little spikes kind of sticking out of the bottom. They're not spikes, but you get the idea. Or you can go with something like a roll-up J-pole. This is great for when you're portable, you're hiking, you're doing whatever. It's really just a long piece of twin lead wire that is cut appropriately for the frequency of operation. And I'll be doing another review video, or I should say test video, to see how much more performance these roll-up J-poles offer. Um, spoiler alert, this is probably going to be the best performing antenna. I assume that it's going to be right up there with the half-wavelength telescopics and even the 47-inch Abri. These are dual-banded as well, so they do 2 meters and 70 centimeters. I'll post the link in the description to an eBay listing for someone who's been producing them for a really long time. I'm not affiliated with this individual. It's where I bought mine, though. Um, it's a good one, so I'll just mention that. The other thing you can do, which is what I did, which actually made moving into mobile ham radio a lot easier, was I 
put a mobile antenna on my car. And then I had a BNC connector, again, just like the one that's on this, uh, this Kenwood here, BNC connector on the other end of that antenna. I had a nice little mag mount that I put on the back trunk of my Honda S2000 before I upgraded to a lid mount. Uh, but on that, I had a diamond quarter wave antenna for two meter and 70 centimeters, a dual band antenna. Roughly, you know, about three and a half feet, four feet, I don't remember exactly, but cost about 60 to $70. And with that, the cable, the coax that came off of it, just ran that up to the center console between me and the passenger seat and had a little BNC connector that I just simply connected my radio onto and off of. This was incredibly convenient and eventually I upgraded to a 50 watt mobile radio that still lives in my car. I've been using the same one for a really long time. And uh, that's been great. It's been, it's been kind of the, the way to go. But you can do that as well at home. You can get yourself a mag mount from HRO or even buy one on Amazon or whatever. Slap that on top of something big, heavy, and metal like a filing cabinet and just run your coax into your handheld. It is pretty much a guarantee that your handheld is going to perform better when it goes into a nice mobile antenna even on a mag mount on a filing cabinet. Pound for pound, ounce for ounce, if I'm sitting in my home and I'm using an HT antenna like this signal stick, which is still good, still convenient, it's gonna perform better, this HT, if I have it connected on a standard size quarter wavelength antenna like on a mag mount. I think that's probably a good stopping point here. Um, again, this is supposed to be a video to help people starting out in ham radio, and I would love it, everybody here, particularly if you are starting out in ham radio or you're starting in a new thing in ham radio. You've been on ham radio for a while and you're trying out something new and you have a question that you may be too shy to ask on the internet to where people will yell at you and say, didn't you read the manual? Feel free again to email me at josh at hamtactical.com. I'll take some of your ideas and make them into a video like this. It's okay if it's just a little short answer and it's okay if it takes a little bit longer to do. I really do wanna to try to continue to give back to people and help them out. So this is my way or another way I'm trying to do that. If you enjoyed this, give me a thumbs up. If you have not already, please subscribe. And until you see me again, 73.